Every time a new polymer frame striker fired handgun comes out, somebody's going to call it a Glock killer. Usually it's somebody who's looking for any excuse they can find not to buy a Glock. But obviously Glock is still around, even though there are some pretty good Glock alternatives, like the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0, Walther PDP, Breda APX. These are all guns that somebody might buy instead of a Glock if they're in the market for their first handgun. But we're going to know that Glock is actually in trouble when there are guns on the market that Glock guys are switching to. I think the only thing that stands a chance of luring Glock fans away from their beloved Glocks are Glock clones that have more features than the Glock they already own, but come in at a similar or lower price point. I have somewhere between three and six Glock clones to talk about today, so we're going to run through them, see if any of them can actually dethrone the real Glock. Let's get into it. This video is brought to you by our channel sponsor, Venture Surplus, and by pants. Not just pants as a concept, but rather BDU trousers. If you want a nice pair of camel pants, but you aren't on a $400 per pair of cries budget, military surplus uniform trousers are the go-to. The biggest problem is finding the right size. I wear the coveted medium longs, which always seem to be in short supply. The next best thing is new production BDU trousers from Proper, which are available in the original mil-spec design and an improved 2.0 version. The BDU 2.0 from Proper has some 21st century improvements like pockets which have reinforcements on the edges for a knife clip and can accommodate a modern cell phone the size of a toaster strudel. Other than that, there's still the BDU pants you know and love, with those little waist adjustment things on the sides so you can size them up for use without a belt, very helpful if you intend to put an over-the-waist load-bearing belt on top of it anyway. They also have those weird strings in the cuffs, which I don't understand. I rarely need to tie my pants onto my ankles, so I'm going to cut them off. If you're looking for either surplus or new production uniforms for tactical or even just general outdoors use, check out Venture Surplus. There's a link in the video description, and if you use the code provided, you'll get 10% off your order. Thanks to Venture for sponsoring this channel, and thank you guys for watching. Let's get on with the show. Glock used to be way out ahead of everybody else on the market, but they've had a hard time adapting to the popularity of pistol-mounted red dots. So if any Glock clones or Glock competitors are going to compete, that's probably the way they're going to have to do it. Glock's official optics mounting system is the MOS, which is a plate-based system. Also, the design of the Glock slide doesn't really allow you to cut very deeply into the slide to make the optics cut. The MOS system uses very thin adapter plates that don't give the optic very much to screw into, they come with really shitty fasteners, and they cause the optic to sit very high. So there's no hope of co-witness with factory Glock sights, meaning you're also going to have to replace those on top of the premium that you paid to get the MOS version of the Glock in the first place. You'll have a better overall experience if you send your non-MOS Glock off to get milled for the optics pattern of your choosing, but then you're adding cost on top of the non-MOS Glock that you already bought, as well as the wait time and trying to find a reputable shop to do the cut for you. You'll also still need to replace the sights if you want to have co-witness or backup irons to go with your red dot. I know there are plenty of guys out there that don't care about having backup iron sights with their pistol-mounted red dot. That's fine. I do. So if you're in the market for a Glock, but you want a little bit more standard equipment, you can either go up market or down market. Thanks to the PSA dagger, you can actually get a Glock with way more features than a Glock for less money than a Glock. The dagger is a pretty compelling choice. It's available with a huge different variety of slide and grip configurations, different optics and sight configurations with and without threaded barrel, etc. The biggest flaw with the dagger, in my opinion, is that they went a little bit overboard with changes to the frame geometry. The little U-shaped cutout in the sides of the grip really doesn't add anything, just serves as a place for magazines to potentially get hung up. Also, they did change the geometry of the dust cover accessory rail, and that means the dagger is not generally compatible with Glock holsters. One of the biggest reasons I think that Glocks are still keeping their place in the market is just because of inertia. There's so many compatible accessories, holsters, and equipment that go along with Glocks. Even the best competitors like the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0, which has benefited from a lot of police department purchasing, still lags really far behind Glocks. So if the main criteria for a Glock killer is a pistol that makes Glock guys sell their Glock and buy this instead, I don't think the dagger is going to do it. I think the dagger will definitely rob Glock of a lot of potential new purchases. I think the same thing goes for a pistol like the Lone Wolf Dusk 19. One of its big selling points is that the grip angle is different. Now, if you already own a Glock, you probably don't care about the grip angle. That's one of those things that guys like to complain about that usually leads them to purchasing something like an M&P 2.0 or God help us a SIG 320. 
I personally enjoy the Glock grip angle and stock Glock triggers, so the improved trigger and different grip angle of the Dusk 19 doesn't really do anything for me. But they do come in at about the same price as a stock Glock, and they come with more standard features, nicer slide milling, as well as an optics cut for the RMR and co-witness sights. To continue our journey clockwise around the tabletop, we have the Bull Armory Axe. This is another one of those guns that comes in at a pretty similar price to an optics-ready Glock, but just includes a lot more fancy features, like seriously aggressive slide milling that you might see on a race Glock. The frame has very aggressive stippling, this thing has oversized controls, and a really nice trigger as well. So if you were already a Glock owner and contemplating sending your pistol in to get a whole bunch of custom work done, it would probably cost you about as much as just buying a Bull Armory Axe. And then you get to have two pistols. The super nice trigger, as well as the very aggressive golf ball dimple style machining on the slide, as well as the fact that the iron sights on the axe do not co-witness with a red dot, makes this seem like way more of a race or competition pistol, not a duty or combat pistol. Six, four, two. And to bring it full circle, we've got the Shadow Systems MR920. This is probably the most comprehensive Glock killer on the market. The only thing holding it back is cost. It costs a lot more than a Glock. If you're not interested in factory night sights and fancy slide milling though, there is a cheaper version called the Foundation Series of the MR920, which is a lot more in line with the cost of an optics ready Glock. The Shadow Systems guns are a little more of a departure from a true Glock pattern, either Gen 3 or Gen 3 4 hybrid. The MR920 has a universal optics cut that does not require the use of adapter plates. All the optics are directly attached to the slide for security and also allows them to sit lower. They accomplish that by changing some of the geometry, I believe, in the striker channel, as well as the rod that puts pressure on the ejector. The Shadow Systems optics mount really makes the Glock MOS system look like crap. I also just like the MR920 because it still pretty much looks like a Glock. It feels like a Glock. It retains complete compatibility with all of my Glock accessories and holsters. The biggest negative thing I can say about the MR920 is that the trigger is actually kind of a downgrade over a stock Glock trigger, which is usually not the case with Glock clones, except the dagger, obviously, which is way cheaper, so it's kind of expected. So how is Glock doing? Are they killed yet? Well, aside from Gaston himself, no, Glock seems fine, but there is a sign that maybe they're a little bit worried. It's still just a distributor exclusive model, but Glock did introduce a version of the Glock 45 that has a direct cut for the Acro and comes with suppressor height co-witness sights. As far as I know, they've only done that for the Acro pattern and it's only sold as a bundle, including the sights and the Acro already mounted. If you're already a Glock guy and you were planning to get an Acro anyway, that is an extremely compelling package. It's probably the sort of thing that people will actually replace their Glocks with, or maybe just supplement. I'm not sure if Glock would ever consider selling direct milled slides on their own website, or if they have plans to offer other distributor exclusives with different optics cuts. I suspect they will never do an RMR optics cut, because a direct RMR cut on a Glock slide does require you to drill into the channel for the little rod and spring thing that holds the ejector in. A common issue guys run into with Glocks that are direct milled for the RMR is that one of the screws is actually too long, impinges on that rod, and then your ejection pattern gets all shitty. I don't think the screws included with the Trigicon RMR are long enough to impinge on that little rod, but the ones that come with the Holosun 407 and 507 series definitely were. Maybe Holosun has addressed that. Otherwise, you're going to have to grind one of the screws down a little bit to make sure that it does not affect reliability. So yeah, Glock is under threat from all sides of the market. Even true Glock loyalists like me find it very hard to argue with stuff like the PSA Dagger, the Shadow Systems MR920, because they do a more elegant job of integrating modern handgun features than official Glocks do themselves. Someday we'll know why Glocks just shoot better than everything else. Someday we'll know why Gaston was a genius. Someday we'll know why that angle works. Someday we'll know why the PDP wasn't meant for me. Wow, it's a Glock, but nicer. Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. If you'd like to support the show, subscribe, check the description for appropriate links, and I will see you guys next time. Hey, brother. I'm not going to lie, but this is about the dumbest thing you've ever done. You know that? Yeah. Because there's no way you thought you were going to fit into here. 
You got one little paw in the box. Are you taking a nap now? Are you taking a nap with one paw in the box? Really? What was the point of this endeavor, huh? This is a, among the stupidest things you've ever done. Because it's just... There are so many boxes around here that you could totally have fit all the way into. Good grief.